and thank you so much for tuning in to Lattes with Lindsay today. We are going to dive into the topics of self-care and self-love, specifically more so the nutritional habits that can get you to where you want to be overall. First and foremost, if you guys haven't been able to, please follow our platform of needing.balance. It's with a K. And right now, I think it's so important to follow um, our Instagram page just because we are doing a Christmas giveaway. And I'm so happy to give back to each and every one of the people who are listening to this, as well as my clients from massage, personal training, or nutrition. So if you do have someone who is a loved one or even yourself, you can definitely nominate yourself as well please contact me directly in my inbox and just let me know why you would like to nominate that person or why you feel that they deserve a free massage this year. And right now, more than ever, I think everyone needs a little bit more love and why not give it away for free? I mean, everyone loves free stuff. So please contact us at, like I said, needing.balance on Instagram. So today's topic is going to be nutrition. Like I said, I just graduated from getting a diploma in sports nutrition, and I've really been able to really understand the benefits of when you consume the right food and how it can benefit your energy, your sleep. You know, different seasons recommend different vitamins and minerals, and you know, depending on your age, that can be pretty beneficial in regards to your future and how you maintain a healthy lifestyle. So today we're going to dive into all those topics and kind of help you further understand how to improve your overall well-being with your nutrition. So first and foremost, depending on your age, that really alters everything that you are consuming, your um, moderation of food, the consumption of food, how much water you need, etc. So definitely when we are talking about the younger generation between 14 and 17 year old, these are such building blocks for the future of what you're consuming and really educating your kids on with what's important to consume. It is so easy to on their way to school, you know, or even homeschooling right now, you know, with COVID and everything, making sure that that first initial meal is crucial. And, you know, even if it's small, if it's a bowl of oatmeal with with coconut flakes and fruit or a smoothie or hard boiled eggs, anything like that can really increase that energy that the kids sometimes really need in the morning because a lot of them want to sleep in. And with the way school is, of course, they have to wake up a little bit earlier. So just kind of accommodating them with some of their favorites can be super beneficial. Hydration is another thing that I would say is lacking very much with um, adolescents. Unfortunately, because there are so many other options now that they can consume with juices and and electrolytes and Gatorades and, and especially pops and juices. I think with the juices and the pops, it's so easily consumed because obviously it tastes good. Like I'm not gonna deny that, but you know, even just getting your kids to understand if they dilute it just slightly it'll still have a great taste. It just won't be as aggressive and and give them such a crazy spike and then crash within the first couple hours of their day. So definitely trying to educate them on little tips and tricks that they can do, like I said, to dilute the juice or you know, get into the habit of, of having a nice big glass of water in the morning and, and start the day off right with that or tea or whichever. So you know, trying to reiterate that it is really important to start your day right. And you know, when you get into the next stage of individuals, you know, it's a pretty big gap now because when you get into 18 to 64 year olds, which I know is a huge, huge um, gap in ages, it really is the same concept though, because by 18, you would hope that you have a pretty good understanding how your body works. If you consume foods at certain times of the day, it gives you that energy boost. Or, you know, if I have late night snacks, the next morning I'm going to have like a serious tummy ache and it's going to be kind of off or shifted for the rest of that morning the next day. So it's, you really got to pre-plan what you eat, depending on what your parents make or what you make and get into those healthy habits of saying, okay, if I eat too late, then that means it'll affect my sleep and it'll affect, you know, how I feel in the morning. So why don't I just pull back that extra serving and maybe just give it a minute, let my body kind of expand and (laughs) accept the food that I've had and, you know, kind of work with that first. So definitely, you know, anything 65 plus from there, 
I mean, at that point, you know what works for your body. If you are unfortunately overweight, you know, make sure that your portions are are normal portions. I know that some of you would be retired, which is amazing, and congrats to you. But that doesn't mean that your time is over in regards to nutrition and taking care of yourself. I think overall, that is probably the most crucial time where you should start taking care of yourself because what I've heard, because <laughs> I am not 60 or 65, but once you kind of get past that hump in life, you know, you really truly start to feel certain emotions and certain body aches that maybe you haven't felt before or, you know, your your comeback from injuries is a little bit slower. So making sure that you're eating the right food throughout the day is crucial and getting through, you know, those healthy habits every single day. And it's okay if, you know, Christmas is coming up, for example. Every single person is going to be eating everything they see. It's, you know, it's a seafood diet. Everything I see, I eat, you know, and it's something that I totally understand and I totally respect. But, you know, something that I learned years ago when I tried Weight Watchers for a few years is that they teach you about your plates. And I know that at Thanksgiving and Christmas and all these different occasions, even birthdays, I mean, your plate is not a regular size plate, but just start with you know, a couple pieces of meat, crap ton of veggies, and, you know, who knows, maybe some stuffing that your mom made, because I know my mom's stuffing is is definitely, it's a weakness. (laughs) I will fully admit that. But, you know, start with that, have a glass of wine or water or whatever you're going to have it with, and just really begin with that plate first. You don't have to have everything on your plate at once. I've definitely been through that. I've been a person where, you know, I always think someone's going to take my food. So I always grab as much as I can on my plate to make sure that I get my serving selfishly, of course. But, you know, just knowing that the food is still going to be there, whether you take a little bit or, um, you know, a moderate amount of food on your plate. So kind of being cautious of that during this crazy season. I know that COVID is going to definitely bring a lot of restrictions with family gatherings and stuff like that, but I'm sure that you'll still be cooking or you'll be having a large amount of desserts because, hey, like most people, we love baking at Christmas because it's so fun and everything is super, super delicious. So moving into, you know, the foods of winter, I think it's really important to really understand what vitamins and minerals are recommended for the winter season because, as you know, besides COVID, we have flu season. It's it's a constant uproar of, you know, conversation with flu shots and how to increase your immunity. Everything like that during this season is super crucial because as you know, you are currently probably looking outside and it's super sunny outside, but tomorrow may be snowy. So, you know, with this indecisive weather patterns, you really have to make sure that you are balancing your food properly to make sure that your internals match your externals with health. So some of the things that I recommend are, you know, the winter vitamins, I call them. So vitamin D, first and foremost, obviously, as you know, we don't get as much sunshine as we typically do in the summer and the spring. So, you know, making sure that you do get that through food first. I think the food is the most crucial part before you go into vitamins. But even before you start purchasing all these different ingredients to make your internals feel better. I think the first thing you should do is get blood work. Blood work is something that I am not a huge fan of. I'm not a huge fan of needles, but I know it's really important to find out what you're low in, what you're high in, if you have certain allergies to things, because I think that is the first step of knowing how to improve your overall well-being. Because if you just buy things and naturally your body just pees it out, if you do overconsume it, then you're not actually maximizing the things that you're you're buying or purchasing for yourself. So first, blood work. Once you find out kind of what you're high and low in, then you go from there. And I applaud the people who go and buy the vitamins to improve their life, like I said. But I think the very key ingredient is to start with foods. And, you know, luckily everywhere in this world, there's education on, you know, what foods have different vitamins and what has different energy and has also like water consumption inside the the fruits and veggies for you. So you can also maximize that. So, you know, doing your research, getting your blood work, 
understanding what you're low in are, are things that are really key. And once you kind of understand that, then you can get into, for example, like I said, the winter season vitamins that I always recommend. So depending on what you need or what you lack in, some of the most common vitamins that people are having an insufficient amount of in the winter because we don't get the sun. So why not replenish it with the things that we can consume naturally? So oily fish. So if you're a fish person and you love like salmons and herring and sardines, all that kind of stuff is really, really great for you when you get your vitamin D. If you're not a huge fan of fish, you can also get through like egg yolks or red meat. Those are just a few things that you can try. Uh, to consume through. If you're also not a huge fan of those, um, you can kind of, like I said, head online, see what really works for you. Um, Make sure it's a good source, obviously, like when you are researching so you know it's legit and it's not just um, hearsay uh, recommendations. So definitely start with that first. The second one that I always find really important during the winter season for most is vitamin C. And With vitamin C, as you know, during flu season is something that's really, really helpful. It boosts, you know, your immunity. It kind of fights off any type of um, issues that you can have internally. And uh, it's a good fight back (laughs) type of vitamin. So, you know, foods that have that in it would be red pepper, um, cabbage, broccoli, radishes are just like a few that I know personally that are really effective. And have high sources of vitamin C. I mean, you can also get it from oranges and stuff, but I find that a lot of people are probably sick of tangerines at this point. And, you know, once you have too much citric acid, sometimes that is so much on your mouth and you get those little cuts and it's just not fun. So those are just a few other options besides obviously oranges that you can find vitamin C in. Um, The next one that I find is such a overly common issue, whether you're an athlete, uh, you know, regular individual who does occasional workouts, uh, or just someone who, you know, goes for walks <laughs> every single day with their dog or whichever. I think everyone does truly lack potentially in iron, depending on your blood work. But from my experience through healthcare, a lot of people do have iron deficiencies and ways to really improve it are through food and, you know, getting that. And of course, like I've mentioned before, if, if you are consuming, you know, you go to the keg and you consume way too much steak, which is a good source of iron. You know, naturally your body takes whatever it needs to, stores it in the certain components of your body, and then naturally pees out to the rest. So, you know, um, a, a great source of iron is red meat, porks, um, seafoods, leafy dark greens is a huge one. So if you're like a kale or a romaine or uh, any type of lettuce, that would be awesome. And then peas. I did not know that peas have iron in them, which is a really cool fun fact because I love peas. So just so you guys know, <laughs> that's that's a great one. If you're looking for a little side dish at Christmas, that is really good for iron and will help you kind of stay focused and alert. So, you know, the two last ones that I find are you know, good, good vitamins for the winter are vitamin E and vitamin B. So, you know, you can, like I said, you can consume vitamin E through supplements and all that kind of stuff, but make sure you do your research with brands. I cannot stress that enough. It is something that I wish I learned a long time ago because I was taking many different vitamins or multivitamins or whichever before I really started to get educated on nutrition and, and what the perks are with starting with the food groups with those vitamins instead of always consuming naturally the supplement version of it. So, you know, with multivitamins, I know that a lot of people take them at different age groups. It's, I'm not going to say that it's not good <laughs> because if someone who is super malnutrition uh, or they don't take care of themselves, probably a multivitamin is good for you. Um, And like I said, you just naturally pee it out anyways. But, you know, I think just trying to understand what works for you personally versus, you know, what any ad tells you that you should get or, you know, the women's women's multivitamin or the men's multivitamin is is something, you know, you got to look into the brand as well as the actual amount of vitamins within that supplement. That is also something that's important. So it's not like a thousand like IUs or international units per vitamin. They all have different values within those multivitamins. So if I have, you know, a high in vitamin B in my own 
consumption with food and I take a multivitamin that has, you know, a thousand IUs, then technically like I don't need that much and I'm just wasting uh, that amount of money that I'm spending on that multivitamin because what I actually need is very low within it. So make sure you check out the, the brands and kind of what the breakdown is and how much actual units are a part of that multivitamin a day that you're taking. And if you're looking to see what foods have vitamin E in it, it would be, you know, asparagus, avocado, and tomatoes are probably like the main ones I'd say. And then for vitamin B are the same thing as the iron. So leafy greens, seeds are really good. Nutritional yeast, which I know a lot of people use in different um, recipes, seafood, poultry, uh, eggs, and a lot of dairy products actually have um, vitamin B too. So if you really look at the, the five that I've mentioned already for the winter vitamins, most of them actually kind of intertwine with each other, which is really, really good. So, you know, like I said, I cannot stress to you enough <laughs> how much you should just consume your vitamins with your food before going external and grabbing more vitamins. And, you know, I'm just trying to make you save some money. So <laughs> during this Christmas season, I think it's something that a lot of people, you know, uh, need to save and uh, why not save it with nutrition? So, you know, going into discussing energy and how to really improve that during this tough season, because I'm sure you're feeling it too. You know, by 435, it's dark outside. Mentally, you're already shut off sometimes at work or you get really tired because, you know, you're really used to when dark comes out, that means you go to bed. It's nine o'clock at night. But mentally, you know, you still have half a day to accomplish whatever you need to get done at work, whether it's at home right now or if it's physically at your work. So how do you really improve your energy? You know, what types of things with nutrition can I do personally to improve or excel at work for those last four hours that I have maybe lower levels of energy or I didn't sleep well the last night? So what are, you know, what are some things that can help me? And I find with the courses that I've taken and the education I've grown with, The first and number one thing I've heard statistically and educational is bananas. Bananas is something that is huge with potassium. It really gives you an energy boost. You can throw some peanut butter on there if you want for protein. You can throw some honey on there for an extra little sugar boost, whichever you'd like. Obviously not too much (laughs) because honey is 100% sugar, but... Bananas is a great thing for a healthy snack in between meals where you're kind of having a low point. You're not too hungry, but you do have a low, you know, energy. So you just need to have that banana, give that yourself that extra boost, get further a little bit and go from there. Now, if you are a sushi person like I am, definitely you can get into what's called like the oily or fatty fishes like the salmon and the tuna. Those give you huge energy boosts if you are, you know, someone who is looking to get some sushi, you know, I would always recommend, you know, just getting like a little pre-made eight piece roll (laughs) from anywhere, you know, obviously, you know, the fresher, the better, of course. And, you know, just make sure that you are really maintaining that energy throughout the day with the the oily fish, you can combine it with sweet potatoes in that roll. That's also another great energy boost. You know, if you're not a huge fan of sushi, you know, you can make, um, you know, them, them separate. So you can have sweet potatoes with chicken and broccoli, for example. Broccoli, like I mentioned before, is something that is really, really good as a low carb, as well as, you know, that, that good source of vitamin C that we really, truly lack in right now. So, you know, combining those few vitamins with energy foods can actually help you get through your day, which is awesome. I know that a lot of people use coffee for energy as well. You know, just remember, A, it's a diuretic. So, you know, just make sure where you are that you're in a comfortable place. You know, it is super awesome in regards to energy boosting. It does give you that extra little kick that you may need, but it also is a really big dehydrator. So, you know, moving into the next key thing throughout your day with nutrition is hydration. I cannot express this enough that when you have one cup of coffee, you should be having two cups of water. And I know that some of you are probably laughing like, oh, I, I, that's, no, like I don't drink that much water or I'm, I'm not a fan of water or whatever it is. It doesn't matter 
what the hydration part is. Like you can have it with like, you can cut up some cucumbers that has hydration in it. You can have different fruits that, you know, 99% of it is water, right? So, you know, you don't have to have a physical cup of water, but make sure that you are consuming either foods or snacks or, you know, diluting your water with, uh, you know, a couple splashes of cranberry juice, for example, or orange juice or electrolytes, whatever it is that you need to drink that water, please do. You know, it's something that is really, really important, whether you are working out right now, if, you know, you are sitting all day and naturally, you know, you're cutting off that blood supply to those hips and your feet are swollen, you know, things like that, just to be more aware of that long term, those things aren't really fun for your skin to expand because of the swelling in your feet the hydration kind of pools there, all that kind of stuff. So just being aware of how to replenish your body properly and making sure that the hydration is balanced with whatever you are consuming that can be really high in salt or, you know, really high sugars or caffeine. So just being kind of cautious how to balance all that stuff is really, really important. I think, you know, when you are consuming a large amount of salty food, make sure that, you know, a lot of people don't realize the easiest way to measure hydration is with a pee test. And, you know, you don't have to do it on a stick. You don't have to do anything fancy. You literally just go to the washroom. And, you know, when you're done, you just measure to see if, you know, if it's crystal clear, that means that you potentially could be overhydrated. And not to say that's a bad thing, but, you know, you are hitting the requirement of what you need. And literally it's replenished everything through your urine and and cleaned out all the salts and and the potassiums that naturally come out. So that's a huge plus. Yay for you. If you are someone who has like a lemonade color and that's like a, you know, kind of a faded yellow, that is pretty much a very well hydrated individual. So that just means that you are where you need to be. Anything worse than that, where it's, you know, like an apple juice, (laughs) most people say, and I'm sorry if I just totally ruined apple juice for you, but you know, that is something that you are dehydrated like to the utmost (laughs) and I would strongly strongly advise you to get some water in you or you know like I mentioned before find some fruits or vegetables that consume or have water in them and just munch on those a little bit to kind of get that back down for you because it's really not good to be dehydrated um there's many different things in your body that obviously can happen you know the first thing that I know personally uh, that a lot of my clients go through is Charlie horses and their calves because naturally the the water does pull from any of the external sources so they can break down and move um, you know all the stuff that's trying to go through your bowels or your stomach throughout the night and they pull from those external factors so just be kind of cautious and known that that's something that happens in your body and you definitely want to keep it hydrated so you don't go through muscle cramping because magnesium and, you know, melatonin and all these things only can get you so far with comfort with muscle cramps. So just be cautious and and take that extra step to, to stay hydrated. Something that I find also that a lot of people potentially can lack in is that they focus so much on low carb foods that they don't really make sure that they are getting that protein. So not to say that low carb foods are bad. I mean, you know, some of them that you can consume are broccoli, zucchini, uh, bell peppers, uh, cauliflower, uh, turnips are really good. Also asparagus and mushrooms. Like those are some of the things that are low carb foods that are great, but you can also consume, you know, protein and kind of equalize that low carb food as well. Cause low carbs are also meat, seafoods, um, you know, zero calorie beverages, all those types of things are really good as well to kind of get through that day and and give you that energy boost, that protein and that hydration all kind of combined into one. So making sure that you're doing that will get you through the day successfully. And then you move to the nighttime and we get into sleep. Something that I find actually surprisingly, a lot of people are going through right now where they're getting tested for insomnia or, you know, the inability to sleep for long periods of time. Technically, you know, with the studies that I've researched, 14 to 17 year olds should sleep for about eight to 10 hours. And then 18 to 64 year olds, like I said, big gap, but you know, you should be sleeping between seven and nine hours. And then anyone who is 65 years old plus should be sleeping for seven to eight hours. So making sure that you are getting that sleep at the end of the day is something that is really important because regardless of how your day went, (laughs) you really need those hours to fully function for that next day, whether it's for a meeting, a test, a a workout, a a game, whatever it is, 
make sure that you are getting your sleep. And, you know, based on your age, that is important. And that there's nothing saying that more hours are bad or, you know, sometimes I've heard people say like, oh, all I need is four hours. And that's great. These are just general quotes and stats that I personally know um, for each age group. So depending on what works for you too, that's also a very independent (laughs) uh, choice as well. So, you know, if you are someone who is having a difficulty sleeping, some of the things that I've found work with some of the clients that I've kind of worked through that with are, you know, music that calms you down. And sometimes you can really initiate that with yoga. I think a lot of people sometimes do like stretching programs before bed. So they kind of get into that calm, relaxive state versus like a very stimulated movie or a really crazy show or a lot of violence, whatever it is that stimulates your heart rate the whole time. Try and think the opposite and go towards a more calming state. So, you know, I know right now (laughs) a lot of people are watching Christmas movies, which are very loving and calm and relaxing. So that may work for you. You can kind of integrate, like I said, that yoga when you come home. Take 10, 15 minutes, go on YouTube, type in, for example, yin yoga, Y-I-N, and that's something that is very calming. You know, there's only a few poses. They're nothing crazy too, which if you aren't a huge fan of yoga, it's great for just stretching in general you know, light a candle, get in the mood (laughs) and try and just relax before you go to bed. I think some people are so overstimulated, whether it's on their cell phone, social media, they had an argument with someone or, you know, like I said, I keep bringing up Christmas, but it's very much something that is happening right now is a lot of people are consuming sugar because of the amount of cookies they're making or cakes or events or birthdays. Um, Obviously, you know, with, with social distancing and all that jazz. But, you know, making sure that you are following the steps that you need to get a full night's sleep. That's the, that's the key part. There's a Calm app I think I've mentioned before. I'm not sure how much it costs. <laughs> I know teachers actually luckily get it free, which is awesome for them because they are going through so much right now. It's insane. And like I said, there's a, a, an app called Calm. And LeBron's on it. There's um, Scotty Pippen's on it. Matthew McConaughey. I always forget the girl's name from Titanic. Um, But, you know, her name's Rose. (laughs) That's how I remember her. You know, these are some of the people that are on there. And they created these sleep stories. And what they do is, you know, for 30 minutes or however long you want it for, they read a story that's very calming and it it relaxes your heart rate. And it just kind of distracts you from whatever else is going on in your mind. And naturally, you can fall asleep. So that's something that you can look into. The app also has lots of like meditation and sleeping music like rain, et cetera. So definitely take a look at it if you are looking for um, a suggestion or in need of something uh, for sleeping habits. And, you know, something that is the biggest thing that I find most of my clients are having a success with is right now there's so many sales on books with Black Friday and Cyber Monday that even reading a book before bed, you know, trying to finish a chapter or even a few pages sometimes can trigger your body to relax versus going on your phone and and getting hooked on, you know, scrolling. I know if some of you, like I mentioned in the first episode is, you know, Social Dilemma, which is a Netflix like documentary that talks about everything that goes on with social media. They have full intentions to keep you on that the app and get you to scroll more or you know if you ever notice like they they send you nudges on um, Facebook or you know on Snapchat for example it says so and so just uploaded a recent story on you know their account like those things are not meant to you know those aren't ironic like it's it's something that they have pre-programmed to set up so you go back on their app and scroll and get addicted again so not something that I would strongly recommend doing going you know to bed on uh you can always try you know even listening to a podcast that's something that a lot of people do because there are millions of thousands of podcasts at this point that you can take a look at that are calming or can put you in a zen state that can really help you kind of go to bed so With all this being said, I hope that each and every one of these topics that we've talked about, about vitamins for the winter season, you know, getting blood work to know where you are at internally and making sure that you're balancing it out with your foods and your vitamins and your minerals, you know, making sure that your energy levels are good, your sleep is good, you know, really like understanding the benefits of, you know, really balancing that mind and body depending on your age 
and, you know, try and grow and educate yourself as much as you can on these things, because you have literally one body, (laughs) like you have one body and, you know, there's so many times I agree that there are vulnerable times that you just eat everything you want and just knowing that the next day you can restart again and get back on track and understand that this is just a roadblock temporarily, whether it's for females, it's the menstrual cycle that is giving you cravings. If you're pregnant, that's also some huge cravings, but, you know, understanding how to curve that, that crave or kind of work around it is something that you can continuously work on. And I think it's a really good idea if you do try. So, you know, thank you so much for tuning in to Lattes with Lindsay today on, on nutritional habits. Like I said at the beginning of the podcast, make sure you follow us at needing.balance. If you are looking for, you know, advice, massage therapy, personal training, uh, sports nutrition, anything that you are looking for, please contact us there. We are also doing a huge Christmas giveaway. December 22nd is the day that I will announce who is the winner. All you have to do is direct message me and tell me why you think the person that you are nominating deserves a free massage next year. Uh, anytime they want to use it. So please contact us at need.balance. And thank you so much, guys, and have a great Tuesday.